Hi, this is Francisco Crespo. I'm from Spain and now I'm working in, in the University of Bio Bio in Concepcion, Chile. My research is based on the continuum dynamical system and with emphasis in Hamiltonian dynamics and with an intersection with geometric mechanics also. Hello, my name is Holger Dulin and I'm a professor here at the University of Sydney and it's great to have SMRI here and uh, hosting a visit of uh, Francisco. We have common research interests which are in Hamiltonian dynamics and in particular he is an expert in the so-called full three-body problem or n-body problem which means to study the motion of rigid bodies in space as they interact through gravity. Celestial mechanics began with the beginning of the civilization looking at the sky and wondering what is happening with those lights in the night and the regularity of those uh, lights and the day and the night. The, the efforts through centuries of humans for explaining those phenomena leads to a high develop of science in general and in particular of celestial mechanics with bodies in the solar system which are subjected to gravitational forces. So we study uh, differential equations and their solutions and the first differential equations that were written down in this context go back to Newton, when Newton discovered the universal law of gravitation. So this is indeed, uh, in a way, the beginning of modern science. And the other ingredient uh, it comes from a similar age, uh, which is Euler's equation for motion of a rigid body. And our problem kind of combines the two things, because uh, instead of saying what Newton did, and which is a very good approximation to say the Sun and the Earth are just point masses, we want to say, no, they're actually rigid bodies and they're not spheres, and that makes a difference. And that problem has been much less studied. So in a way, it's uh, not only Newton and not only Euler separately, but both of them together. Yeah. So the interest of this kind of problem is not only to explain what is happening on the sky, but uh, it has a crucial role in the design of the space missions and the dynamics of, for example, near Earth objects, which uh, the space agencies are very worried about that. All the preparation for, for a space mission is based on those kind of problems, of course. The main problems in celestial mechanics are the uh, end body problem and the rigid body problem. What we are going to study is the full end body problem, which accounts not only for masses, which are points in the space, but they have a shape and they are not points anymore. So complexity is huge and we need a lot of uh, simplification in this problem in order to be able to say something. So the simplification came in the form of assuming some constraint about what the shape of our body can be or not. Also, we impose some assumptions that give you symmetries on, on our system and we take uh, advantage of those symmetries. So to illustrate one famous example in mechanics, we brought a pendulum here. This pendulum is very simple, so if I hold uh, the, the upper ones, then there, there you go. But uh, so this is uh, not the end body problem, but uh, I can now go from one pendulum to two pendulum. And then the system is already actually quite a lot more complicated. Because these two are coupled together. And uh, in this case, the motion is already chaotic. This system does not have any symmetry at the moment. And uh, I guess there is a third pendulum, so I can let it go. And uh, so you can think of this as a kind of typical example of a mechanical system that executes chaotic motion. And here our symmetry approach wouldn't actually work because there is no symmetry in this problem. There are periodic solutions, but they are very hard to find. So now, what we have to do is kind of uh, introduce a symmetry. Um, that's a bit uh, stunning to do for a pendulum. It's uh, turning off gravity. 
And the way that you turn off gravity is you just lay the pendulum flat. But they're still coupled through these joints. And now the system is a lot simpler. And it has now a rotational symmetry. That's the rotation about uh, this axis. And so now you could ask, for example, is there a solution where maybe the pendulum are stretched out and they all just go around in this simple matter? And though, even though that system is still chaotic, as you can kind of see uh, when you give it a different initial condition, it is, first of all, much less chaotic than when it's hanging down. And because of the symmetry, we have now a chance to find particular solutions. The problem that we're studying it is a lot more complicated because it's not just pendular, but actual extended rigid bodies. And they're not coupled by joints, but they're freely move in space and only have gravity kind of holding them together. Uh, but this idea that the symmetry helps to find solution, that still works. So as Francesco said already, the equations are so hard that we cannot expect to solve them. But what we do is we look for special solutions and these special solutions are manageable because the system has symmetry. And so we use uh, kind of tools from uh, invariant theory, from group theory in, in mathematics. So, and that's really where geometric mechanics comes in. It's a kind of modern point of view on, on the classical subject of mechanics. And so we are going to use these tools in this problem. They have been explored very much in the n-body problem, but not so much in the full n-body problem. And uh, that's uh, what we're going to do. And we hope uh, to find new solutions. These are, as I said, it's not the general solution because it's a chaotic system. And we cannot expect to solve it, but we can find uh, particular solutions. And these might, for example, also be relevant uh, to motion of binary star systems that have uh, high rotation rates, for example. And they, because they are so close to each other that it matters actually that they're not point masses. So I mentioned earlier one of my papers, there's of course also one of his papers that, uh, that we're trying to extend, which is basically already, uh, I think, part way towards the symmetry reduction of the problem. Francisco wrote a paper with his student on, on the Poisson structure of this problem, which is uh, another mathematically important structure that appears when you try to deal with the symmetry of this problem. And we hope to kind of combine our two papers into, into one future paper that, uh, that combines these ingredients. That's, uh, I guess, from, from a more abstract mathematical point of view, that would be the, the main novelty to come up with this Poisson structure. In fact, I mean, I have done a kind of a modern version of a symmetry reduction for the n-body problem, which uses invariance, which is basically just combination of the variables that do not change when you apply the symmetry transformation. So for example, some combination of variables that don't, doesn't change when you rotate the system or when you translate the system. And that's a very basic idea, uh, but it leads to very interesting geometric concepts because these invariants in this problem, they are quadratic and they satisfy an algebra, which turns out to be the symplectic algebra. And uh, so we kind of run into lots of interesting mathematics uh, exploring this approach. And uh, in the end, uh, it did help in that case to find uh, interesting new solutions. So now we hope to do the same in this more complicated problem. Our approach to the problem is kind of the same as before, as we are using the same techniques and the, the same mathematics to try to, to understand uh, better the full and body problem. We also are extending some results, or some recent results that we have obtained for the end body problem, in which we didn't impose anything on the bodies and we tried to understand what can we say when we are not imposing anything on the bodies that are involved and neither we are not restricting the number of bodies involved in this problem. And uh, we obtain that uh, there are several configurations that uh, we are not, we, we didn't expect to obtain. What we obtain is that equations allows for those configurations, but we are not certain for sure that those configurations exist. And what the thing that we would like to obtain from this project is examples of those configurations and, and a more detailed explanation of the behavior of those bodies in, in those uh, configurations, which are very interesting from the mathematical point of view, but also from the applied point of view, because 
this gives you configuration in which you can put bodies, artificial bodies around natural bodies. You can track the, the position of those bodies that are not chaotic. You can actually control how the bodies are moving around natural bodies. I'm very grateful for the invitation that Holger and the effort of the SMRI for me being here. It's an excellent place to carry out research. You are provided with time and with the opportunity of share your ideas with people. And uh, I think that the main ingredients to being successful in, in, in a research. No, it's great to have uh, Francisco here and it's much better than email or phone or Zoom. And it's also for me, it's a good uh, chance to get out of my daily uh, rhythm. Uh, it's a little bit of a different place. Uh, so I like to come here, you know, to actually think and discuss, fill the boards and erase the mistakes and then come again and, and make it correct. Uh, so <laughs> no, I think that's uh, it's a great environment to work in and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here.